Hey everyone, it's Viv. Um, I kind of just wanted to do a video because I haven't really uploaded one in a long time. The last one that I uploaded was just our candy club review. But I haven't really like updated everyone as far as like the health stuff goes. Um, some people kind of know, some people get the gist of it, some people have known me long enough to know what's going on. Um, but I figured I would give like an overall update as to what's been going on with my stomach and um, just kind of like an update, I guess. It's been a long journey, um, a very long journey. And it's nowhere near over. It's I don't see any end in sight, but I think we're heading down a better path. And I think we're going in the right direction. And it's just a matter of keeping strong and hanging in there until we get to where we need to be and until I get the help that I need. But I have met some amazing people along the way and I'm so grateful for that and um yeah so sorry the quality is like so crappy on the video it's I'm filming off the laptop since I think the camera is dead and I didn't want to use my phone battery and stuff I don't know anyway um uh, basically what's been going on is I'm still struggling with my stomach um if everyone has followed the issues from the past or whatever it's basically, I found out that it is related to my POT, so postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It is an autonomic disorder, and I'll do a video in the next couple of days explaining what that is and explaining my journey from the beginning in a separate video as well. Um, you can Google it. You can YouTube it. There's several different kind of videos and tons of information on what exactly is but tomorrow um, I'm thinking about filming a video explaining what it is exactly um, but basically the stomach issues are related to the pots and the stomach issues are still not under control I was tested for gastroparesis and the gastroparesis test came back negative However, I found out recently that gastroparesis can come back negative for a POTS patient in a gastric emptying test one day, but the next day it could come back positive. So the gastric emptying test isn't really a 100% reliable test for someone with POTS because the body is so complex when it comes to POTS and everything is constantly changing. So one day I could have the gastroparesis symptoms or type of um, delayed emptying one day and not have it the next. So it's not exactly a reliable test, um, but everyone that I talked to from ER nurses and doctors to other doctors to other people who have gastroparesis and pods all think that I have gastroparesis. It's just a matter of finding the right doctors who actually deal with pots and gastroparesis because only a doctor like that would really be able to understand that that is possible. Otherwise, a regular GI doctor doesn't know that POTS is complex and that something like that could even be possible. So I was, I am being treated just for stomach issues based upon, you know, what they've been able to find and what they have been able to find. And I've been treated with Librex and Zofran and neither of those things are working. So I am able to eat more, which is great. I am forcing myself to eat. No matter how sick I feel, I try to force myself to eat. And it's now that I'm learning more about pots and stuff, I am learning what foods to eat and what foods to avoid. And with pots, intake of sodium is huge. Like, usually cardiologists advise you to not eat sodium. You know, low sodium is the best for you. But someone with pots, 
a cardiologist says you need to increase your sodium intake because that is what holds the fluids in the body. And that is the problem that POS people have is that we don't hold the fluids. So salt intake is super important for us because salt holds on to the fluids in our body. So I am supposed to be putting salt on all of my food. And it's really hard for me to do that because I can't stand salt. Like, you know, I'll put salt in our food when I'm cooking it, but I'm never the type of person who likes salty types of food and the amount of salt that I need it's almost like you have to make it to where you almost can't stand eating the food because it's supposed to be that salty so I've been struggling with that and um I was recently in the hospital this past Saturday today is now Wednesday and I was in there because I've Everyone thought I was having a heart attack. I had really bad chest pains. My heart rate was super high. I couldn't breathe. I had numbness in my hands and down my arm. I had pain in my shoulder blades. And people were freaking out. And I kind of knew that I didn't really need, technically need, to go to the ER. Because I've had chest pain before. But this was so much more intense. But I knew that if I went to the ER, I could possibly get you know, the fluids that I needed and I knew I would be sent home because no one around here locally really knows much about what I have. So, um, my husband came home, Steve came home and I asked him, I was like, Hey, you know, I need you to come home. And I was doubled over in pain, crying on the couch or not on the couch, on the bed. And I couldn't breathe or anything. So he called 911. My mom called 911 because they wanted, they were freaked out. You know, it was, it was scary. Um, basically, it was a really bad POTS flare. And um, I'm so used to having to go to the hospital for those kind of things. But like deep down inside of me, I don't want to go because I know that there's nothing that really can be done. So I ended up going and the one of the nurses that were in there she was like you know I know some I have a nurse another nurse that works here whose daughter is 16 she was just diagnosed with POTS and I was like no way so um after I came back from going to the bathroom the nurse whose daughter who has POTS literally was sitting in the room waiting for me to talk to me and she basically like understood everything that was happening to me she understood how I was feeling she understood everything that I was going through and how much of a struggle it is because it doesn't just affect your stomach it affects your heart rate it affects your entire autonomic system and like I said I'll explain all that kind of stuff in another video but she was saying that her daughter was just diagnosed and how her daughter um what the heck? Sorry, has a port and is getting saline infusions, and um, how her daughter has gastroparesis and all this other. Just basically, like she was describing her daughter's life, but it sounded exactly like mine, and so it helped me feel not so alone. Um, I haven't been able to find any doctors to help me. At all whatsoever. I've been going to the Cleveland Clinic and the cardiologist there who was supposed to specialize on POTS was of no help. Um, he basically took me off of the heart rate meds that are supposed to help my bring down my heart rate. He told me to change my diet to put coconut oil in my coffee, to eat avocados, to exercise my legs, to help bring the blood flow back up to the upper part of my body but told me that he does not believe in medications because they don't work, according to him. Um, but when I was speaking with his pract the other practitioner who works alongside him, she believes in medications, and she believes, I told her that um, back when I was first diagnosed when I was 17, that they actually put me on mitodrin and propranolol that they worked amazingly and she said you know did that work for you and I said yes so I thought that that's what they were going to do they were going to put me back on it and that I would start feeling better but he decided the cardiologist to take me off of 
the any meds that I was on um, for POTS and it kind of just everything has been spiraling out of control since then and so I ended up um, I do put the coconut oil in my coffee I do my leg exercises daily now I need to start swimming um, he said basically any exercise you can do with your arms and your legs sitting down to do them so I'm working on it I am hoping to get into the gym fairly soon but because of how bad I've been feeling lately, the gym is kind of like on the back burner. Um, I definitely want to get signed up for it, but I think that doing the at-home like exercises at the moment is probably the best option until I can get um, to another doctor to kind of help me with the other symptoms of POTS. So um, the ER nurse, when I was in the ER on Saturday, gave me her... Um, her daughter's doctor's name she goes to the Miami Children's Hospital down in Miami and her daughter has been getting amazing care there has been getting the help that she needs and um, she told me that she was gonna take my telephone number and my name down and that she was gonna text me and call me and talk to me kind of more in detail about everything and then reach out to her daughter's doctor to see if he'd be willing to help me so I felt like really encouraged by that and it made me feel good that actually someone was taking an interest in trying to help. You know, my mom's been trying to help and has been researching doctors and stuff. Um, but it's still really been difficult um, to really find somebody. So she, the nurse called me and texted me that I want to say that night maybe or maybe the next I can't even remember and she um we sat on the phone and we talked forever and she told me that saline therapy is a huge thing it's amazing her daughter has gotten great results from saline therapy um where they put a port in the chest and they do at home saline infusions to help increase the fluids for someone who has a stomach issues along with the pots it's really, really hard to take in the amount of sodium and water that is needed. So that's really what I've been struggling with is getting in all the fluids that I need because I basically feel like it's all about to come back up. So I kept talking to her and she was recommending different medications and vitamins to take and um, help find me a doctor to go see down in Miami. So we found out that her doctor her daughter's doctor can't see me because he only deals with pediatrics since her daughter is young. Um, she's considered pediatrics, but she did help me find a doctor, an electrophysiologist, I think it is, to help me. So I have an appointment with him July 28th, and I'm just trying to manage at home basically until then. And then she found a GI for me to see too, who deals with gastroparesis like it's like a specialty that she specializes in so she doesn't specialize in the autonomic disorders but she specializes in gastroparesis so I'm hoping that maybe she might know a little bit about the complex disorders about everything so I'm gonna start there and I've done tons of research about saline therapy and um, we are currently working on getting me a port and saline it's a struggle because some doctors don't really know much about it but it's definitely in the works and I know it's gonna help me feel better as far as the high heart rate not being able to breathe um, basically almost passing out um, the feeling of dizziness headaches being so tired and stuff like that I just need the extra boost until I can get all the symptoms of POTS kind of squared away. So if I can get the port and saline therapy going, then I can work on the heart rate meds and finding um, hopefully the electrophysiologist, whatever he is, he's part of a cardiology too. Um, I'm hoping that he'll be able to find the right meds as well and that the combination of what he does and hopefully this new GI doctor um, does, we can kind of just piece it all together and get it all squared away. But that's just kind of where I'm at. It's, it's a day-to-day -day struggle and I am struggling and I miss being 
you know, the wife I used to be to Steve, and I miss being the mother that I used to be to the girls, because right now what? I'm basically neither of those. I'm good for nothing at this point. Um, I try, I push through as much as I can, but when you are in a bad flare-up and you are so tired, it is extremely hard to be any kind of anything to anybody. You can't really take care of anyone else, let alone take care of yourself. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, this video will kind of make more sense when I explain exactly what POTS is. Um, you know, people with autonomic disorders and dys, dys, dysnotomia, or I don't even remember how you, I don't even know how you pronounce it, dysonomia, dysonomia, anyway, with, anyway, at least with POTS, um, I know that it's an invisible illness. I look completely fine. I look like your everyday average person doesn't really have any health issues, but know that inside it is not the case and I'm thankful that I don't have something that is like cancer or some kind of deadly disease or anything like that um, but it may not be life threatening so to speak but it is definitely life changing and it is definitely an invisible illness and I wouldn't wish it, wish it upon my worst enemy. So that is where I'm at, um, basically getting into doctors to help. This doctor that I will be seeing in Miami specializes in what I have 100%. He specifically specializes in autonomic disorders. So that's the plus there. He has great reviews. Um, we are working on getting a port for saline and at-home saline infusions, even if I have to go to a, an infusion center. Um however many times a week for infusions I'll do that but I really want to learn to do them at home and Steve is willing to learn how to do them at home to help me access the port and stuff like that so we're working on that and I feel like that should be coming sooner rather than later um working on getting on a better diet basically I was told by the ER nurse to only eat foods that are basically like super no, like no high fiber something high in fibers but basically she said picture a bowl of water put the food that you want to eat in that bowl and if it does not dis if it does not dissolve within 24 hours then you do not need to be putting it into your body so basically applesauce mashed potatoes um super soft foods nothing nothing high in fiber so that is what i'm going to be doing that is what i'm trying um, super high sodium foods with really high sodium. I'm trying to drink Gatorade, but it upsets my stomach because of all the sugar. I'm trying to drink as much water as I can, but with the stomach issues, it's just really hard. So sodium, Gatorade, I'm on a bunch of different meds right now. Um, I did not wean myself off of the medication that the cardiologist told me to because I was advised against it by the doctors in the ER. <laughs> Um, and the nurse in the ER, um, just trying to manage until I need to get into the doctor and I can get the help that I need. So stay tuned for a description as to what POTS is or a better understanding. Um, I guess you can never really fully understand unless you have it, but at least this way you are informed on what it is because not many people know about it and it's not a rare disorder it's not something that's rare it's common but it's often misdiagnosed or not diagnosed and it takes years for some people to be diagnosed um i found i had it when i was 17 or 18 and i was just retested recently a couple weeks ago with a chill table test and it came back again for pots so um that is what all the doctors at the Cleveland Clinic believe all the issues are, and that's what they know they are. And, um, <coughs> sorry, the baby's awake. So it's just a matter of getting the right help that I need because I'm not getting it where I'm getting now. They are basically doing nothing. 
So, but yeah, um, I look forward in doing the follow-up video as to explaining what POTS is and then another video based upon like my story from the start up until now. Thanks for watching.